Hello, today we will deal with the causes of hypomagnesemia. Magnesium is low in the body and therefore we call it hypo, because that stands for low, of magnesium in the blood. Emia is standing for blood, so hypomagnesemia. What are the causes? We can divide them into two main groups. We have those that are related to gastrointestinal tract and renal system. The gastrointestinal tract, we will further divide them into diseases causing hypomagnesemia in the gastrointestinal tract due to surgery, due to medications, and due to genetics. So diseases, surgery, medications, genetics. Let's see the diseases. Diseases of gastrointestinal tract can be vomiting, diarrhea. What are the difference? Diarrhea is more common actually than vomiting. Why? Because in the lower gastrointestinal tract, we have around 15 times higher concentration of magnesium than in the upper gastrointestinal tract. That means if you are having a diarrhea, you will lose 15 times more of magnesium than you would do in vomiting. So diarrhea is more common, commonly causing hypomagnesemia. Which diseases do we have left? We have malabsorption, steatorrhea. So we have four, four diseases uh, worth to remembering. Vomiting, diarrhea, malabsorption, and steatorrhea. What about surgery? What surgical procedure can cause hypomagnesemia in the gastrointestinal tract? Small bowel bypass surgery. What type of, then we'll go on to genetics, or let's say go on to medications. Medications, proton pump inhibitors. Proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole, if you're using that for longer time than one year, then this usually causes hypomagnesemia and therefore it's very important that you check the magnesium level before you start this proton pump inhibitor th therapy and you check it also regularly during the course of the therapy so that was medications what about genetics genetics is very simple it's called primary intestinal hypomagnesemia because it's it's primary caused in the intestine and it's a, a mutation that will then uh, be transferred to generation to generation. So this is usually seen in neonates, so in small, small babies. Okay, so it's not usually seen in adult life. So the most common in adult life is vomiting, diarrhea, and the medications that we said, proton pump inhibitors and so on. Surgery, small bowel bypass surgery. So let's move on to the renal causes. Renal causes, we will also divide them into diseases, surgery, medications, and genetics. Let's see the diseases. Diseases can be uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. That means that we have a diabetes mellitus patient who does not get proper treatment and therefore the, uh, the insulin is not enough. And, and this will cause then uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, which will mean that we have then hypomagnesemia as a result. So uncontrolled diabetes mellitus. Primary aldosteronism, that's another cause and hypercalcemia that means a too high amount of calcium and if you have too high amount of calcium that would then cause a low amount of magnesium because they are co competing in the in the tubules i will not go into the details here but magnesium and cal calcium is competing and if you have a too high amount of calcium that will win and therefore you will get a low magnesium so that was diseases, these three worth to mentioning. Of course, when we're, we can also add lifestyle. So alcoholism is, is a disease, one can say, or, or rather a lifestyle problem. So alcoholism, don't drink too much alcohol, that can cause hypomagnesemia. And the same with fatty diet. So please don't eat too high fat concentration in, in the diet because it, it has been shown for example when you have epilepsy usually we give a cat we usually give a very high uh, fat diet because this will cause something called ketogenesis and that can actually treat the epilepsy so it's and, and it has been shown that when we do this we actually get this a side effect and hypomagnesemia which is not good so please, alcoholism and high fat diet should be removed, okay? That was disease lifestyle. Let's go into surgery. What type of surgical things do we have? In gastrointestinal, we had small bowel bypass surgery. Here, we will have thyroidectomy, so the thyroid gland is, is uh, removed, or the parathyroid gland, 
the small small glands sitting on on on, uh, on the thyroid glands the small ones if you remove these then you can cause something for example called hunger so hu hungry bone hungry bone this means that the bones are renewed and they need a lot of magnesium to do that so it's very hu hungry for magnesium so if you have a surgery like this then you can expect hypomagnesemia also if you have a transplantation of an organ and especially a kidney so if you have a kidney transplantation then you also can get uh, hypomagnesemia after the transplantation that was surgery what about medication here we have a lot of medications so let's let's group them we have for example diuretics all these uh, medications will now act on the kidneys diuretics like uh, tiazide diuretic or loop diuretic then we have antibiotics like aminoglucoside or amphotericin b then we have chemotherapeutic drugs like cisplatin. We also have drug, uh, medications called calcineurin inhibitors or pentamidine. Then we also have something called anti-EGFR monoclonal antibodies. These are attacking the EGFR receptors because it has been shown that there are genetic mutations of this EGFR uh, receptor that can cause hypomagnesemia and if we block this pathway then we can treat the uh, no then, then we can cause hypomagnesemia so we, this anti egfr monoclonal antibodies can cause hypomagnesemia as a side effect due to this egfr receptor and these are ending with mumab it's very funny medicine is uh, quite funny sometimes because the names of the medications are so ridiculous uh, for example, Mumab, that, when you hear Mumab, then you know for sure it's some kind of monoclonal antibody. Okay? And, and, and these have names like Panitu Mumab or Nesitu Mumab. These are, these are two real medications, I'm not joking. So Panitu and Nesitu Mumab. Okay? And if you have this, then you can get if you get this, you can get uh, hypermagnesemia. Okay, and, and another uh, medication is cardiac medications like digoxin. So once again, let's repeat them uh, because these are hard to memorize. We have antibiotics like amphotericin B, aminoglucosides. We have chemotherapeutic drugs like cisplatin. We have diuretics like tiazide and loop diuretics. We have these uh, calcineurin inhibitors. We have pentamidine. We have this uh, anti-EGFR monoclonal antibodies ending with Mumab, so Panitu Mumab and Nesitu Mumab. Then we have uh, cardiac medication like Digoxin. These were the medications. And now genetics. What about genetics? We have Barter syndrome, Gittelman syndrome and East syndrome. These are also fun funny names. Barter, Gittelman and East syndrome. I will not go into details in, in, into all of these because that will be dealt in separate lectures. Okay, and the other genetic mutations that we can see is anything related to the potassium channel, related to the sodium-potassium ATPase channel, there can be mutations in this EGFR receptor. So mutations in these, and there are many, many uh, diseases then causing hypomagnesema, but these are very rare, and therefore I don't want to spend time uh, on explaining all of these because these are rare, but I need to mention them at least so you know that genetics are important. So you can you can get it from your father or your mother and therefore you can get hypomagnesemia. Therefore it's very important to at least mention it. So that, that, that's it. So let's um, then make a quick summary. So when you hear hypomagnesemia and you want to find out what the cause is, then you think of two things, gastrointestinal or renal. If you think of uh, any of these, then you divide them into disease, surgery, you have medications, and genetics. Okay? These, these four things. And we will then go with gastrointestinal. We take the diseases here. We had vomiting, diarrhea, malabsorption, steatorrhea. Then we go on to surgery, small bowel bypass surgery. Then we go on to medications, proton pump inhibitors. Genetics is primary intestinal hypomagnesemia. That was gastrointestinal. Renal, the diseases, we had primary aldosteronism, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus, hypercalcemia, that was diseases, go on to surgery. Surgery, 
like thyroidectomy, parathyroidectomy, or kidney transplantation, or any other organ transplantation, but especially kidney transplantation. After that, you can cause it can cause hypomagnesemia. Medications, all of these medications that we listed, we had diuretics like tiazide and loop diuretics, antibiotics like amphotericin B and aminoglucosides. We have these uh, chemotherapeutic drugs like cisplatin. We have calcineurin inhibitors, pentamidine. We have these anti-EGFR monoclonal antibodies ending with Mumab, which was Panitu Mumab and Nesitu Mumab. Cardiac medications like digoxin. That was medication. Then go on with genetics. Here we had Barter, Gittelman, and East syndrome. Also, any mutation in the sodium uh, potassium channel or the sodium potassium ATPase channel or the EGFR receptor. And in the kidney problem, we could also add lifestyle, which was don't drink alcohol so much. And the other one is don't eat so fat, fatty diet. Okay, so please reduce the fat because that can also cause hypomagnesemia. So that's it. Thank you very much for listening.